Hey friends, today I'm going to teach you how to make sauerkraut. And this is me, Joan Gregerson. I'm a wellness coach and an eco nut, and I'm so excited to share this with you. First, we want to talk about why are fermented foods important. There is so much information now about gut health and fermented foods. Some are estimating that 70% of our immune system is in our gut and that one course of antibiotics can alter our gut flora for up to 12 months. Our gut health impacts everything, our digestion, elimination, mood, and mental health. 70 million Americans suffer from just irritable bowel syndrome alone. So by uh, having this healthy gut, there's a lot of research out there that it may improve things as diverse as diabetes, autism, obesity. So it's really cool. And the other thing about gut health is sometimes you'll just not feel well and you can feel that your digestion is slowing down. So it's nice to have a way to get probiotics into your diet in a way that you enjoy. So what is a happy gut? So a happy gut has a healthy microbiome it's able to do all the work of digestion. It's able to extract all the nutrients you need without causing pain, discomfort, bloating, or distress, and that it allows you to have a bowel movement daily. This is a good resource, this book, Happy Gut by Vincent Pedra. And the recommendations are explore food sensitivities, use yoga and meditation to de-stress, eat mostly plants, for meat, choose organic, hormone-free, grass-fed, choose healthy fats such as avocados, cold water fatty fish, nuts and seeds, and eat cultured foods. So cultured foods are also known as fermented foods. And cultured foods, when you culture a food, you're extending the life of the food to preserve it. And it also, it nurtures the good flora in our gut because it's full of good bacteria, which is also known as probiotics. So this helps promote healthy, balanced gut flora and regularly eating cultured food gives continued support for gut health. And if you think about it, almost every culture has fermented food as part of its diet. So my question for you is how many fermented foods can you think of? So here's a few of them from around the world. So in Russia, they often use kefir. In Germany, sauerkraut. South Korea, kimchi. Egypt, sourdough. Russia and China, kombucha. I love this quote from Dr. Frank Lippmann. Over the course of the last century, however, fermented foods fell off most dinner plates their medicinal effects wiped out by pasteurization, resulting in a dead-on-arrival food supply stripped of the live bacteria the gut needs to stay in balance. So I have a question for you. What fermented foods did your parents and grandparents, or maybe even great-grandparents, eat? So that's a question that you can ask them. When I lived in South Korea, we had kimchi at pretty much every single meal. And one year, the, there was so much rain, it was damaging the Napa cabbage harvest. So on the front of the newspaper, it said, kimchi crisis, because in South Korea, they're still eating from a traditional menu. And so they're eating this fermented vegetable several times a day. So I think that's normal. And that's just something that we lost in our diet. So what is going on? What is this fermentation? So this is lactic acid bacteria that is naturally found naturally on vegetables. And the interesting thing is that fermented vegetables can be safer than raw vegetables. So the lactic acid, which forms during fermentation, can kill off harmful bacteria. So it's inherently safe, but it's best to follow your normal cooking safety ABCs. Um, the scientific literature has never documented a case of food poisoning of fermented vegetables when done properly. So what is properly? 
So the basic recipe is just veggies plus salt is going to give you fermented vegetables. But in order to do it properly, you need to weigh, measure, and follow the directions. There is a natural tart flavor that you'll find in all lactic acid fermentation, and that's because the sugars and the carbohydrates have been broken down and used up during fermentation. So what is pickling versus fermentation? Well, there's, there are really two different ways to process vegetables. Pickled vegetables use vinegar. Fermented vegetables use salt. If fermentation continues on, it may develop vinegar. So when we're doing fermentation, we're using salt, not vinegar. The other cool thing about fermenting is it saves money. So you could buy a fancy jar of sauerkraut for 10 bucks, but you could also just make one for a few dollars. And it makes great gifts for your friends, and really all you need is salt plus cabbage. Making fermented foods is so fun, and I really encourage you, I will leave the, the link to this in the, the comments, but there, this is an amazing video called Sander Kraut, and it's about Sander Katz and all of his fermentation experiments and how going back to nature was really part of his healing process after being diagnosed HIV positive. And he's the author of The Art of Fermentation, and he's just this amazing person. So really encourage you to watch that 12-minute video. There's lots of good resources out there if you want to learn more, and I will put these in the notes uh, below the video so you can find them there. All right, so let's go. Ready to make sauerkraut? This technique that I'm teaching you today, I call sauerkraut 101. And it's basically the same technique that I learned two different places. One I learned from Holly Howe, she has a website called makesauerkraut.com, and she is an excellent resource. I highly recommend her. And then I also went to a training class with the Colorado State University Extension. So this technique um, comes primarily from those two sources. So there's many ways to do your own fermentation, but this technique that I'm teaching you is great. It's easy, there's no guesswork, and it really is designed to work every time. And so it's perfect for your first time making sauerkraut. So these are the ingredients for this sauerkraut 101 is mostly cabbage, a couple of carrots, and then either garlic or ginger. So the basic recipe is just carrots, garlic and or ginger, mostly cabbage, and then a tablespoon of sea salt. And that is going to yield one quart jar of sauerkraut. Here's an overview of the basic steps you're going to get set up, shred whey and combine your veggies, add salt and massage, pack your jar, place your circle cap on top of the veggies, put the jelly jar inside as a weight, then lightly seal the jar and ferment. And we'll be going into more detail on all of those. So the first step is getting set up. So here's the equipment that you need. You definitely need a kitchen scale. So if you don't have one, then just borrow one from someone. You'll need the recipe, which is attached here as a handout, a one quart wide mouth canning jar, a four ounce canning jar, also known as a jelly jar, a plastic pap for a one quart jar, or you could just put plastic wrap under a metal lid, a large knife cutting board and vegetable peeler, a grater for shredding your carrots, and a large salad or mixing bowl, and tape and a marker. So the first thing you want to do is set up your scale. Make sure that you know how to zero out the scale so you're not including the weight of the bowl. And that is tear, T-A-R-E is that word. So usually you just put your bowl on there and then you press the button that says tear if it's digital, and it will zero it out. I had the problem with mine, it kept going off, and then when I turned it back on, it wasn't set up right. So make sure that you write down the weight of the bowl in case you're going to need to do some arithmetic to uh, subtract that weight out later. So just pay attention, make sure that you know 
if it's counting the weight of the bowl or not because that's important. And get some music going so you've got some good energy because it's going to take a little while, not, not too long, but, you know, a good hour or so. So you want to make sure you're in a good, happy spot while you do this. And the next step is shredding, weighing, and combining your veggies. So first you want to prepare your extras. So shred your carrots, mince your garlic, or shred your ginger, and place these in a bowl first. Then the next thing you're going to do is make a cabbage cap. You're going to see why we need this a little bit later, but for now you just need to know that before you chop up your cabbage, you need to save a couple of the large outer leaves. Once you've got a nice big one that you like, then just lay it out flat and put the lid down and then just cut around it with a knife and save this circle cabbage cap for later. So now you can go ahead and cut up your cabbage. What I usually do is quarter it, and some people like to keep the core in so that you can hold on to it when you're shredding, and some people like to remove the core immediately. Either way, it doesn't matter. And also, don't really worry about your slices because sometimes they will be a little thinner, a little thicker, and it really doesn't matter for your, the finished product. So don't get all crazy worrying about how thin your slices are. So now you're going to go ahead and add the shredded cabbage to the bowl with the extras. And you want to do this just kind of gradually because you want to stop when you get to a weight of 1.75 pounds. That is also the equivalent of 28 ounces or 800 grams. So in your bowl, you've got it zeroed out. You have your carrots and your garlic or ginger, and then you're adding enough of the cabbage, and then you stop when you get to the 1.75 pounds. The next step is adding the salt and massaging the vegetable and salt mixture to develop this brine, which is just that salty liquid. So all you do is you add one tablespoon of salt and then you toss it all together. And what I recommend at this point is give yourself a little break. By now your kitchen is probably kind of messy because you've been cutting up all those vegetables. So go ahead and let that salt develop and let it start breaking down the cell walls of the cabbage while you are cleaning up for a minute have yourself a cup of tea, and then you can go ahead and go back to the cabbage. And if you take a break right then, it will just uh, speed up the process so that you don't have to do all of the breakdown through manually massaging it. The salt is doing some of that work for you. So you just want to massage it for five or ten minutes. Usually it really doesn't take much more than five minutes until you get a pool of liquid forming in the bottom of your bowl. And at first it's going to seem like nothing is happening, but don't panic because you'll just go another minute or so and suddenly the juice will start flowing and you'll have this brine forming. The next step is you're just going to pack it in a jar. So the way you want to do it is take a handful and really pack it down hard to eliminate the air pockets. And you want to do this one handful and then pack and keep going like that. It really doesn't work very well to put it all in and then try to pack it down. So it's better just put a handful, pack it, and then continue until you have put all of the the vegetables, that whole 1.75 pounds that you weighed and measured. So you put all of that into the jar. And again, you just pack in and you press and you pound to remove any air pockets. The reason that's important is because if you have air pockets, then it could mold. So as long as the, all the bits are submerged in the brine, you won't have mold. So that's why it's important to be really diligent about removing any air pockets. The fifth step is to place the cabbage cap. So 
So this is that little circle of cabbage that you made earlier. And all you're going to do is just put this in the top of the jar. And what this does is it keeps all those little tiny bits under this cabbage cap. So if you have any little bits that are floating above the cap, go ahead and remove those. So now you're going to add the jelly jar as a weight. So you just go ahead and, and it will fit right into the jar and you'll put that right on top of the cabbage cap. And as you push down, you'll see that the liquid is going to come up and it's going to make a wall of liquid between the jelly jar and the quart jar. And what this does is it ensures that all of the little vegetable pieces are going to stay submerged and they are not going to come in contact with air. Because as we said before, if they do come in contact with air, that's when they can mold. So they just need to stay submerged in brine. And by using this little jelly jar technique, it forms this little wall of brine and keeps them out of the air. The next step is to screw on the lid. Next, you're going to screw the plastic lid on gently. If you don't have a plastic lid, then go ahead and use your metal lid, but just put a piece of plastic wrap below it because in the fermentation process, we don't want anything to be coming in contact with metal. You also want to go ahead and label it and say what is the type that you're making and what is the date that you started fermenting it. The reason that we don't want to seal it tightly is because excess liquid will seep out during the fermentation process, and that's normal, but make sure that you any liquid that comes out, don't return this to the jar. So all the kraut pieces should be staying submerged in brine for the first few days. If you need more liquid, then you can make additional brine and add it in there. And here's the recipe. It's just one and a half teaspoons of salt to one cup of warm water. Stir it till the salt is dissolved and cool it down before you add it to your kraut. Then you're just going to let it sit in a bowl for 14 days out of direct sunlight. You can either put this in a cupboard or just leave it out on your counter. I usually like to leave it out because I want to keep an eye on it and not forget about it. And you may notice some different smells happening over time. And don't worry about that because there's different strains of bacteria that are going to be increasing and then decreasing and so all of that is going to settle out after about 14 days. Then you can just remove the jelly jar. You can eat it right then or you can store it in the refrigerator and it will last for months and it's also really nice to go ahead and package up into smaller jars to give as gifts if you'd like. So that's it. Enjoy your sauerkraut. I hope you make more every month or two. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I hope that you really have fun with this and enjoy the just amazing nature's brilliance in this process and how every single time you make it, it's going to taste a little different. And that's part of the magic of doing this. So remember, health is wealth. So here's to your health. Thanks so much, and let's make some sauerkraut.